Hello my beautiful friends, it's Amanda here and today we are going to talk about this little cup of very dirty brushes. <laughs> I asked on my Instagram stories what kind of videos you guys would be interested in. One of the most popular options was my favorite brushes and it's really easy for me to tell you my favorite brushes because I have this little brush cup. You may notice it right here in the background of a lot of my videos because this is what I grab every time I'm going to film a tutorial. Anytime I'm just going to do my makeup for life. I grabbed this little cup because it has all of my top favorite face and eye brushes in it. I do have this secondary cup that kind of has my extra brushes, some either more specialty brushes or things that I like but I just don't grab for every single day. But today I'm just going to take you through my little everyday brush cup. These brushes are dirty and I am sorry and I hope that you are better than I am about constantly cleaning your brushes but I've been using these. I've been filming with these. I've been wearing my makeup so these are pretty dirty right now. Apologies in advance. I promise that I do clean them. I just don't do it every day. I don't do it as often as I should. I'm not going to tell you how often I do it uh, but you should do it more often than I do. Okay. So I have these separated out into three little categories. I have face brushes, I have eye brushes, and then I have these little extra tools. So let me just quickly show you my extra tools category. I feel like these two are pretty self-explanatory. I have this little comb from Real Techniques. I use this on my lashes after I apply mascara to kind of separate them. If I get any clumpage or mascara stickage, this kind of separates and makes my lashes look a little bit more wispy. I feel like a lot of people say they use this for their brows. I use a spoolie for my brows, but I use this all the time for my lashes so that I don't get any like chunky, chunky, funky lashes, you know. Eyelash curler. Everybody knows what this is for, right? I'm not... You, you guys know what this is. This is an eyelash curler. This one is from Tweezerman. Actually, this is not my most favorite eyelash curler that I've ever used. I had one from Tarte that I loved because it was spring-loaded, so I didn't have to open and close it. I just had to close it. It opened itself, but that one broke. I bought this one to replace it, and it still works, so I still have it. It's not bad. It's just I liked that Tarte one better, so... You know, it's a, this is okay though, it's fine. This little thing, I've gotten a lot of questions about this little thing. This is a little spatula. I'm pretty sure I bought this on Amazon many, many years ago and you're probably wondering why the heck do I have this in my everyday tools? Well, I'll tell you why. I use this to open my palettes so often either because they're really difficult to open or just because I don't want to mess up my nails. So I just use this bad boy to pop my palettes right open without messing up my nails. This comes in especially handy with NARS compacts because they're so hard to open. I also use this little pointier side to scoop single shadows out of magnetic palettes if I want to get one out of there. Again, it just pops right up instead of struggle busting it. Those are my other tools. Now let's talk about my favorite face brushes. I have quite a few, quite a range here. These are my three powder brushes. I use this smaller one for setting. It's actually the setting brush from Real Techniques. I'll use this to apply my setting powder to my under eye. I usually like to set the center of my face too because that's where I tend to put concealer. So this is my little setting brush. I love this. I swear by this brush. I don't use anything else for setting powder. Like I said, I have that little extra kind of backup brushes cup. I This is the only thing that I use for setting ever. These are both for powder. I have this one from Wet n Wild. This thing has been through the ringer. I've had this brush for so long. It used to be a really pretty white and light pink, but 
just a million washes could not restore this to its former glory. But this has been a great, really handy little powder brush. It has super soft, very kind of floppy synthetic bristles. And I love this for like an all over finishing powder or if I just want a very light dusting of powder on my face, this is perfect because it doesn't pick up too, too much product. Whereas this bad boy, this is a very dense brush. I think this is meant to be a foundation brush, but I actually use this for powders. This is perfect for when you really want to apply a lot of powder. I use this with my MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural, and instead of wearing foundation, I put concealer kind of all over, and then I use this to apply a lot of that MAC powder to just give me an all over sheen. It does provide a decent amount of coverage because of this really dense brush. This is from a holiday set from Tarte a couple of years ago and I still love it. All of the little print has been well worn off because I use it so much, but the bristles have held up really nicely. So hopefully you can tell what I mean with the different densities here. All I really need is one of each kind of powder brush like this and these two are my favorites. These are my bronzer brushes. I like to have two options, don't I? I really, I think that's gonna be a theme. I have an angled brush. This is from Luxie. It's the 504 large angled brush. This is what I use when I want a more targeted bronzer look. And then if I want either a sheer wash of bronzer or just a more diffused kind of all over bronzed look, then I'll use this brush. This is actually a blush brush from Ulta. I started using this for bronzer and I really liked this flat, almost paddle style brush. I felt like I could get a really beautiful, more diffused bronzer look using this whereas my angled brush gave me a more targeted kind of chiseled bronzer look. So it really just depends on what product I'm using and what kind of look I'm going for, but these are my go-to bronzer brushes. What do you know? Two different styles of blush brush. This little mini brush is from Eco Tools. It's from a little travel set and I don't know how I got hooked on this brush, but this is my go-to brush for powder blush. I think it's just the right shape and size for me to really easily apply blush the way that I like it. This is another brush that I've had for such a long time. It's a similar shape to the Ulta blush brush that I use for bronzer, but this one's just a little bit more full, a little bit more fluffy, and a little bit more rounded all around whereas that Ulta one was more of a flat paddle style. And this is a stippling brush. This one's from ColourPop, and this is what I use for cream cheek products, so cream blush or for my Super Shock blushes. This is the F4. This has really super flexible duo fiber bristles. It's all synthetic, so it's absolutely perfect for cream products. It doesn't soak up too much. I also like the duo fiber for cream products because it doesn't deposit a huge amount at once. It's really easy to control and build the pigmentation. So this is my go-to brush for cream blush, super shock blush, sometimes even other cream face products like cream bronzer, cream highlighter, but mostly blush. Lastly for face. <laughs> Shocker! Two different styles of highlighting brush. I have this really, really tapered, soft, flexible brush from Refer. This is the 18 brush. This is my go-to for powder highlights. Then this more dense, little fluffy brush is another ColourPop brush. This is the small fluff brush, and this is absolutely perfect for Super Shock highlighters. It has just the right density to really be able to pick up that creamier formula, but it's soft and fluffy enough that it can really diffuse that highlight. If you want softer, you can go softer. If you want to really build it up, this brush can achieve that look too just by layering it up a little bit more, but this is the perfect brush for Super Shock highlighters. I get that question a lot. How to use the Super Shock 
face products with a brush, these two are the way to go for blush and highlighter. These are my eye brushes, and I know it looks like a lot, but like half of these are the exact same <laughs> brush. We might as well just address the elephant in the room, which is the fact that I have literally six <laughs> of this exact same style of ColourPop brush. So back when ColourPop first released brushes. They only came out with a couple of little styles of eyeshadow brushes and this was one of them. And I think I got it as a free gift with purchase. I mean this was years and years ago. I can't quite remember but I think I got one of these many years ago as a free gift with purchase and it immediately became my favorite crease brush. Any tutorial you ever ever watch me do I will be using this brush as my crease brush every single time. This is the E1 from ColourPop. I don't really feel like I have to say that much more. This is clearly my favorite eyeshadow brush of all time. I love it this much at least. Also I definitely have more of these somewhere. Now let's talk about these little fluffy brushes. I mainly use the larger ones for either setting my eye area. I know not everybody likes to set their primer. Personally, I prefer it. I feel like I get a better blend from my eye looks when I do that. I'll also use these to like blend out the very edges or add a little like brow bone highlight. I don't know big fluffy brush. I used to use these for my crease. I don't use them anymore. You just saw the ColourPop brush that took over my life. But I do still get a lot of use out of these big fluffy brushes. I have one from Luxie and one from IT Cosmetics. And then I also have some smaller brushes. I'll use these for either adding depth to the crease or the outer part of the lid and just generally more detailed blending type of work. So I do keep a small little arsenal of fluffy brushes and these are my favorites that I use constantly every single day. If you watch a lot of my review videos then this one you already know is an absolute staple for me. This is the flat eyeshadow brush from e.l.f. that I use for all my brush swatches in my palette reviews. I also use this on my eyes as well. This is definitely the hardest working brush that I own. <laughs> These are both e.l.f. brushes. You can tell this is the swatch brush. I also have one that has slightly shorter bristles for more detail work, smudging, this is great for applying color to the lower lash line as well, but these are both e.l.f. brushes and I use them a lot. E.l.f.'s got some nice quality inexpensive little brushes, honestly. This is a great multitasker brush. This is also from EcoTools. It has a flat kind of packing brush slash smudging brush on one side then a nice fluffy little tapered blender. I don't use this little double-sided brush all the time, but it has just been very handy. These are great quality brushes, very useful shapes. I take this when I travel all the time because it's just a nice little useful brush. So the very last two brushes in my everyday brush cup are a very, very flat smudging brush and a pencil brush. This little flat brush is from Luxie and the pencil brush is from ColourPop. These are what I use when I do a sort of smudgy faux liner look. These are my go-to brushes for that. You can tell they have dark smoky eyeshadow on them all the time. Those are all of my everyday go-to use in every tutorial favorite must-have brushes and tools. I get asked about what brushes I'm using pretty frequently in my tutorials. So now you know 99.9% .9 of the time when you see me using a brush, it's one of these. <laughs> I hope that this was helpful. I hope you got some insight into my favorite brushes. 
definitely a lot of themes running through what my favorite brands are for brushes. I'm gonna try to find all of these exact brushes and link them down in the description box if you wanna check them out for yourself. Some of them may be discontinued. I'm sure that Tarte foundation brush is not around anymore. So maybe I'll try to find something similar. I would love to hear what your favorite brushes are. Do we have any of the same favorites? Do you have any great brush recommendations that you feel like I would really love that I really need to try? I always love to hear what you think about things too. So make sure you leave all your thoughts down in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye. I'm gonna separate these out into little categories. Case brushes. <laughs> like 10 of these are the same brush. I have issues, all right, it's fine. Pretty sure I got this on Amazon. 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 <laughs> wow. Now let's talk about my favorite face brushes. Why did I do it like that? From your pet point, huh? I'll use this to put setting out, out, um, eh, huh? Oh, oh, almost dropped it. What do you know? Because of who I am as a person, this is the moment that I start judging myself. It's a problem. I have a problem. I'm fine. Wow. I just called myself out. Little leaf earrings, aren't they so cute? Now I'm shamed myself into needing to clean my brushes after looking at these up close dirty brushes. In my defense, I'm really, really good about cleaning my sponges. I like to use a damp sponge for my foundation and I clean those after every single use. So at least that's something that I'm good at, but I don't even know. It's just so much work. That's not an excuse. Clean your brushes, go do it now. I'm gonna go do it now because now I feel bad about myself for showing you my dirty brush. If we waited until all my brushes were clean, then this video would never happen. So it's one of those now or never type of moments. You know what I'm saying? I think you know. Okay, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Let's all go wash our brushes now. I love your face so much. Seriously. And thanks for watching. Okay, bye.